Monsignor McInerney. Governor, my old friend, our leader, Jim Cliver, Fritz's friends, his staff, and, uh, and most of all, uh, his family. I'm honored to be with you today. Michael, Helen, Fritzy, Barbara, his sister, and uh, the entire family. I want to say thank you. It's a, a genuine honor, and uh, I wish I didn't have the honor. I wish we weren't here, but it's a genuine honor to be able to be here today. And uh, I can only imagine how you all feel today. I, uh, having been through what you've been through not too long ago, I can assure you the time will come when you think your dad and your grandpa and your great-grandfather there's a lot of you, thank God, a lot of Hollings is left, that uh, you'll, first thing will come to your, will be a smile rather than a tear to your eye. I promise you it will come, but uh, it takes a little while. I just, my prayer is to come sooner than later for you. Not long ago, uh, um, I, uh, well, you know, the governor and I briefly spoke and some others spoke about, uh, about Fritz. Uh, there's a lot of stories we could tell, all of you could tell, because you're all friends of his. But ladies and gentlemen, the best way for me to start is I'm Joe Biden, and I'm from Delaware, by way of Pennsylvania, and because of Fritz Hollings, by way of South Carolina. The fact is, when I was 29 years old, I got elected to the United States Senate. I was running. I was a county councilman. And I was trying to get someone to take me seriously that I could actually maybe win the seat. I wasn't old enough to be sworn in the day I won, but I was trying to convince people that, uh, particularly in Washington, it was possible I might be able to do it. And uh, Mayor Riley, I went down to see a very important guy. He was chairman of the Democratic Senatorial Campaign Committee. That's the apparatus in the Democratic Party in the Senate that decides who they're going to support and who they're not going to support and how they're going to support them if they do. So I got a meeting through a guy who was one of the seven mules, the four horsemen and seven mules in Notre Dame. Well, he worked for Fritz Hollings, uh, this guy, big old boy named Norty Hoffman. And he said, I'm going to take in to see Senator Hollings. Be respectful, like what the hell heck was I going to do? Excuse me. Bro. <laughs> I was scared to death going in to see the chairman of the Senatorial Campaign Committee, Fritz Hollings. I remember sitting there in front of his big desk, powerful senator, former governor of a great state, making the case why I could win. And I don't remember for sure, but I think that's when he handed me the moniker he always used for me in the Senate. He called me Jolton Joe every time he talked to me, because I followed Norty's advice trying to be confident. I guess I maybe overstated my confidence. And he ended up taking a chance on me. He saw something in me that I wasn't sure existed, but he believed in me. And I can say without fear of contradiction that uh, that made me believe more in myself, the fact that he believed in me, Joe. And I'm sure he did the same to a lot of you and the thousands of people in this great state. He believed in them, and he gave them confidence. Looking back, I thought, uh, if this powerful senator thought I could be a senator, well, maybe I really can do this. Maybe I really have a shot. The odds were very long. I was running against a very popular man, and George McGovern was the, our candidate, and he got, uh, I think, 34 percent of the vote in my state. And, uh, but I won by a landslide because of Fritz of 3,100 votes. But how many times did he do the very same thing for all of you, give you confidence that you could do things you weren't sure you could do? That's the only — that was only the beginning, though. He camp, came up to Delaware and he campaigned for me. We won, and he was the first person I called beyond my family who wasn't able to be there that night when we won. And uh, he was there when I was on top of the world. He was also there for me when I was at the bottom. Six weeks after election, I got a phone call. I was interviewing people in Washington for staff. and. Uh, saying that the poor young first responder got put in the phone. The young woman just blurted out, you got to come home. Your wife and daughter have just been killed. The tractor trailer broadsided them and killed them. Your sons may not make it. Well, he was there 
then. Aside from my family, the first people to bring me back from that black hole that I found myself in were Fritz and Pizzi. And that's not hyperbole. That's literally true, those of you who know our relationship. He convinced me to do what I didn't want to do, to come and be sworn in. I remember him saying, Joe, only 1,702 people have ever been sworn into the United States Senate. Come and stay for six months, just six months. Help us organize. Well, I was slow, so slow, Governor. I'm the first senator I ever knew. I thought they really needed me. We had 58 Democratic senators, and I, we had a Democratic governor who replaced me with another Democrat. But I said, OK, I would do that for six months. And he convinced me to be sworn in, and he insisted when I got there, I wasn't very much for just sticking around. I wanted to get home and see my boys. I commuted every day for uh, 36 years to go home with my family. And he convinced me to, uh, to stick around. Instead, he'd say to me that he didn't want me uh, uh, to, uh, to not be meeting the colleagues that he talked about. Meeting and he would have a dinner he was five, there were five senators at a dinner, and each, they rotated homes, and they would have a dinner in a different home once a month. And I was the only person anywhere near my age, and the only person who was single who would show up at the dinner because Pete insisted that I come to the dinner. And then five years later, when I first met Jill, and they saved my sanity during that piece, they made me part of what was going on, they got me engaged. Five years later, when I met Jill, Fritz and Pizzi were there once again. Jill was with me, and Jill and I were talking on the way down, remembering how he invited the entire Supreme Court of the United States of America, he invited the entire United States Senate, and he invited everybody who could come there, and he, they paid for it. They had this reception in the caucus room, the famous room in the United States Senate, and everybody came. And he made Jill and Pizzi, brought Jill into the into the group and made her feel totally part of everything. When we got to watch uh, how Fritzy and Peach embodied that phrase from Christopher Marlowe, the poet, he said, come live with me and be my love, and we shall all the pleasures prove. Well, Michael, Helen, Fritzy, you and your family and ours, we're always there in the highs and the lows for one another. I came down to see you when your sister Sally passed. Fritz shared the pain that no parent should experience, and for you, no sibling should have to deal with. When we lost our beau, Jill taped a quote on my mirror where I shaved. She said, Kokum Kierkegaard, she said, faith sees best in the dark. And I think it does. So does friendship. Real friendship sees best in the dark when you need somebody to be with you. And being here in this revered chapel reminds me of all the stories he would share with me in the days we sat together in the Senate about the Citadel. He talked about the Citadel like it was, in a literal sense, his Citadel, everything to him. I could tell, I was telling the uh, Commandant, that, uh, that uh, I, uh, um, I learned more about the Citadel than you'd amaze, and this is the only second time I've ever been on the campus. Because uh, in, the Citadel was dedicated April the 10th, 1938, 81 years almost to the week of the time that Fritz walked on this campus as a young cadet. Four years later, he joined his fellow patriots the greatest generation in our history in Europe and North Africa in World War II. Look at the glass windows surrounding us. Read the medallions and inscriptions commemorating our war dead, exemplars of courage, duty, and honor. Being here takes me back to one of the most meaningful trips I ever took when I was a U.S. Senator. It was the 50th anniversary of the, the landing in Normandy. And I went with all these men that I had served with at the time who had either landed on Normandy, a couple had, or had fought in the European theater. Listening to, uh, listening to uh, Fritz on that trip was an education all by itself. There in that hallowed ground every day for those 32 years I sat, 
next to him in another hallowed space, the United States Senate. 32 years we sat next to one another. Every single day the Senate was in session. I learned not only what made Fritz tick, not just what he cared about, but I got a glimpse inside of the man's soul, I think, into his intellect, his love of his family, his love of his state. Every senator represents his or her state, but few embody what the state is. And I think Fritz embodied South Carolina. South Carolina's state motto, as you all know, is, while I breathe, I hope. While I breathe, I hope. I got to speak to Fritz just shortly before he died. He still hoped. Want to know what the colleagues were doing up in Washington. The fact of the matter is that uh, it was Fritz. He was South Carolina. With every breath, he brought hope to so many in this state and around the country. What set him apart was not only his big ideas, but he knew how to get things done. He knew how to succeed in the United States Senate. As Jim Clyburn will tell you, this state, like South Carolina and in Congress, he knew how to build coalitions. He even knew how to get along with Strom when he needed to. <laughs> I sat next to Strom a long time in the Judiciary Committee as well. He knew how to change as well. He changed. He learned. As he learned, he changed. It's not easy to say he set up a state network. It's now easy to say he set up a state network of technical colleges which was part of why South Carolina has been able to attract so many world-class businesses here. But back then, he did it as governor, that when he was ahead of his time. He began a wave that became a wave that went across the nation. In 1970, he wrote a policy book called Framed in Real Human Terms, The Case Against Hunger. We had just gone through the Great Society. It had been passed into law, but Fritz, Fritz talked about hunger as a problem, not in the same way. He talked about it differently. He talked about it in terms of human impact. He was among the first in the nation's political leaders to make clear that nutrition and learning were as inseparable as a bond between a mother and a child. They're inseparable. This was a new idea at the time that became actual policy through the so-called Women, Infants, Children program. It's called the WIC program. And it saved untold number of lives. When I was a councilman trying to get first coastal zoning legislation passed in my state to prevent more oil refineries from build, being built in the coastal zone, I would often refer to Fritz. Fritz, the ecosystem of Delaware and Delaware Bay is what it is today, in large part because of Fritz. The only reason we have an outfit called NOAA, where the best scientists in the world focus on our land, our air, our water, our wetlands, is because of Fritz Hollings. We talk about the new Green Deal. He started a Green Deal in a way long before anybody else thought of it. He did it. I could go on and on. If you notice, all these accomplishments, all these accomplishments are in different fields. He didn't track just one area. He went where the greatest need was, and he spoke up, and he had ideas. But it's all for the same purpose, to give people a fighting chance, ordinary people a fighting chance. That's what I think of when I think of Fritz. He devoted his entire life to balancing budgets without compromising values. When everybody say, some would say, I'll tell you what I value, my dad would always say, show me your budget, I'll tell you what you value. That's how you can tell what someone values. Ensuring public education as a birthright for every child. He worked on it and worked on it in state and out of state. Calling out the influence of money in politics. Supported with him a constitutional amendment to, we didn't get very far, to make public funding of campaigns the only vehicle you could use to raise money to run campaigns. You want to change American politics, go back and read some, some of Fritz's speeches, if they were able to become into reality. Thinking harder about how government can work better and deliver better for the American people. That was your father. 
and recognizing that people can change with every breath, we have hope that we can learn from the past and build a better future. Your dad learned from the past, and he built a better future constantly. He was constantly evolving. One of the best times we saw Fritz was in — one of the last times I saw him was in 2017 for this uh, statue celebration in Charleston, where he asked — no one — I checked it out at the time. No one had ever done this before. Asked for their name to be taken off of a building of honor, and someone else he thought more worthy his name be put on it. Your dad did that. That's rare. That's him. The Warring Federal Courthouse. That's what it's now called. And we dedicated a statue to Fritz in that magnificent garden behind the, war the house, the, uh, the courthouse. It reminded all of us of how he insisted on renaming the courthouse for a judge whose dissent provided the lone voice on the side of the Sumter 60 and changed the course of history of South Carolina, literally changed the course of history of South Carolina. Fritz's legacy gives proof to the assertion that he's the most significant figure in this state in terms of length, breadth of career, and what he has done for the state and for the nation, in my humble opinion. And what always stood out is what he would often say. He'd say, what a man will do in public office is best told by what he's done, performance. Performance is better than promise. He'd sit there and tell me and tell all of you and everybody who'd listen. Fritz always promised, and he always performed. What a life. What a legacy. A few years ago, I was with him at the University of South Carolina when a special collections library was named in his honor, and I was asked to speak. The first edition of Paradise Lost is there. John J James Audubon's original engravings are the original galleys from Hemingway's For Whom the Bell Toll is there. And Hemingway wrote, and I quote, For a true writer, each book should be a new beginning, where he tries again for something that is beyond attainment. He should always try for something that has never been done, and that others have tried it, or that others have tried and failed to do. Then sometimes, with great luck, he succeeds. Your dad succeeded a whole hell of a lot, more than almost any of us who have ever served in the United States Senate. That was Fritz Hollings. He always went beyond. So to Michael, Helen, Fritzy, the entire family, I think that's how history remember him. That's how I'll remember him as well. Always, always going beyond. Your dad was a decent and gracious man. Like any proud parent would do, he kept his picture. Uh, well, the best way to talk about this is my mom and dad loved your father. And my mom and dad had pictures of when I was sworn in and, you know, like moms and dads will do when their sons or daughters accomplish something. The picture when my mom died, she still had in her house was a, a picture of my first campaign. It's with your dad, my mom, and my dad when he came up to Delaware to campaign for me first in 1972 as a young senator. They kept that picture. Of all the pictures, there's only three others which they have that my mom kept out, and that was one of them. It's him, my mom, and Fritz. My dad, my mom, and Fritz. When my parents passed away, the picture passed to me, and it hangs now in my library at home, and has since she passed away. A tribute to a giant of this state and this nation, a tribute to a dear friend, a good man, who wrote a great story of, wrote the great story of our time. He never lost hope in my encounters with your dad. Well, God bless you, Fritz. Send our love to Peachy and Sally. And may God protect our troops. Thank you.